Hello and welcome. I'm Ijeoma Honyato. Tonight, federal government lists benefits of Nigeria's participation in the 72nd session of the United Nations General Assembly as President Buhari arrives London after the meeting in New York. Joint Health Sector Union embark on indefinite strike over welfare issues, compliance by members almost total across the country. Our big story tonight looks at the level of compliance with the Anti-Open Grazing Act in Benue State as the deadline for implementation of law draws closer. And U.S. announces more sanctions against North Korea, targets persons and companies trading with Pyongyang. On business news tonight, Nigeria's Auditor General calls for the institution's autonomy to allow transparency and accountability in the country's audit system. On sports news, the Super Eagles of Nigeria qualify for the final of the 2017 Waffle Cup with a 1 0 win over Benin Republic. And from Abuja, non teaching staff of universities' unions suspend their two week old industrial action after negotiations with the federal government. We begin in the United States, where the nation's delegation to the 72nd session of the United Nations General Assembly have been speaking on the benefits of Nigeria's participation at the global gathering. The government officials spoke after seeing off President Muhammad Buhari, who has now arrived in London after taking part at the meeting in the UN. On the sidelines of the UN meeting, President Buhari held talks with other world leaders, as well as the UN Secretary General. Our correspondent, Gloria Umezuke, reports. The United Nations Secretary General, Mr. Antonio Guterres, has met with President Muhammadu Buhari of Nigeria in bilateral talks, commending Nigeria for its efforts in the fight against Boko Haram and corruption. The UN Secretary General discussed efforts to restore the people of the Lake Chad Basin countries, as well as resuscitating the Lake Chad, uh, which is drying up. You know, this is some cheering news for African leaders, as this project requires huge capital, which uh, many countries have seen as a major concern and of course this cooperation is what is needed at this point in time uh, the two leaders equally exchanged views on uh, the, uh, peace and security in Africa as well as uh, in particular discussing the political situation in Togo President Mohamedou Buhari departed the Millennium Towers where he was lodged, headed for the JFK airport as Nigerian delegates lined up to bid him farewell. Nigerian delegates at this meeting are optimistic of long-term impacts emanating from here for Nigeria. We've had a successful outing. The one with Jordan particularly significant, about 200 Amor tanks given us on very liberal terms by Jordan and other areas of cooperation. Of course, the bilateral with uh, Ghana and then with the United Nations uh, Secretary General. The meeting with Trump, the launch meeting with Trump, our president was there. I think uh, this is one general assembly that has been worth its while. The United Nations has shown concern for Nigeria by sending a team of the United Nations Security Council to go and see what is happening in Lake Chad Basin. They were able to visit Niger, uh, Chad, uh, Cameroon and Nigeria and they have made submission against how the internally displaced people, how the general well-being of the, those people in, in those areas will be taken care of. They are seeing Nigeria in a different light, from a terribly corrupt country to a country dealing with these issues, the issues of corruption, economy, and of course security. So in all three areas, Nigeria has got a serious pass mark under the leadership of President Buhari. So this shows that there is more cooperation amongst countries of the world with Nigeria. And this means more investments for Nigeria. The president was expected back into the country on Sunday, September 24th, 2017. From Millennium Towers here in New York, Gloria Umezuke, Channels Television News. And back here in Nigeria, we take a look at security where troops of Operation Delta Safe have rescued two soldiers and four civilians after discovering a camp run by militants in River State. 
The operation followed the report received on Monday by the headquarters of Operation Delta Safe in Yenagoa, the Bayasa state capital. The coordinator of the Joint Media Campaign Center, Major Ibrahim Abdullahi, said the soldiers were on transit for banking services in Onelga River State before they were kidnapped by suspected militants. On getting the report, Major Abdullahi said, troops immediately swung into action and discovered the militant camp with several shrines in the forest, end of quote. He added that the operation successfully rescued two abducted personnel, while a further search of the campsite led to the rescue of four more civilians, including a lady. Now, the Comptroller General of Customs, Hamid Ali, has ordered that all cargoes coming through the ports and land borders will be thoroughly checked by customs. Mr. Ali gave this order while briefing journalists on the 470 pump action rifles intercepted by customs at the Tinkan Island Port Command in Lagos. He also promised to intensify the fight against the current illegal arms syndicate. <laughs> It's the second time in one week that the Comptroller General of Customs and his team will come to Tinkan Island Port Command for the same purpose, to display seized arms imported from Turkey. In January this year, the service intercepted a container of 661 rifles along the Mile 2 Apapa Road. Just last week, another 1,100 weapons were seized at the Tinkan Island port, all from Turkey. The method used this time is not different. The 470 pump action rifles were concealed with elbow plumbing plastic material in a 20 foot container. Taking cognizance of the challenges that lie ahead of the reintroduced physical examination of all imports, the Comptroller General of Customs insists the service will do what is required of it. For us, in the Nigerian Customs Service, we have developed a profile. And we are, like I promised you, and I told you the last time we were here, that we are going to escalate this issue beyond the borders of Nigeria. The customs boss claims the service is collaborating with the embassy of the originating cargo for further investigation. But what is being done regarding the source of these imports? I have the first diplomatic meeting. I have a meeting with the ambassador of Turkey, especially on this issue. Because already our president has discussed this issue at an international forum. He has been mandated to sit with us and let us find a way forward. This latest discovery brings to 2,671 rifles seized within the Lagos zone in the last eight months. The impact these arms could have made can only be imagined if they had slipped through the port. Away from security matters, Nigerian youths have been asked to transform their passion into entrepreneurship skills as a way of bridging the unemployment divide in the country. This message formed the crux of the discussion at the 4th Gamaliel and Susan Onosede Foundation Forum in Lagos, where prominent business personality is featured. looked into solutions. Gamaliel and Susan Onosoda Foundation, a not-for-profit organization, was established to foster the success of the Nigerian child through innovative and flexible opportunities. The third edition of the lecture looked into solutions for the problem of the Nigerian educational system. But this year, organizers have chosen to examine how the Nigerian youth can be empowered through entrepreneurship. For education to play this role in Nigeria, it will be the type that prepares the student for self-employment, especially at a time like this, when jobs from the government and organized private sector are in short supply. We're dealing with a man, remember, a man of excellence, or no sort of, government no sort of. And in anything you do, entrepreneurship, whatever you do, excellence is what you should achieve. The guest speaker and events planning expert, Mrs. Yewan Dezakias, explains the needs to nurture entrepreneurship spirit with passion and mentoring. But I am resolutely against young people coming straight out of school and starting a business. 
I believe it is essential for one to have a period of working for an, an organization, no matter how short a period, to understand the importance of having a structured business. The discussions are thought leaders across various fields of entrepreneurship. Their advice to the youth is that of doggedness in business. Engage your parents, demand it. You are more educated than ours, okay? You are more global than ours, demand it. And you see the same parents will now start releasing that harshness, okay? And that's how new families will grow because you are bound to be better than your parents. For me, passion is to business just like blood is to body. So without blood, of course, it means you are dead. We need to be able to move on from a certificate economy to a country where we're thinking about business model innovation. Arising from this lecture is the need for entrepreneurship mentoring, and the foundation looks to make this a reality. We can raise it to another level, do some exchange where some of these people can get more experience. Because if uh, 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 another foundation is to improve quality of education, we still have a lot of work in terms of fleshing out practical ways of identifying talented youth and the right mentors to, to, to partner with. The lecture ends with the presentation of Award of Excellence to a student, Ikeolua Abiyoye, as well as a school, Starfield, located in the Iju area of Lagos. To politics now, the National Caretaker Committee of the People's Democratic Party has come down hard on some of its prominent members. The party has announced the suspension of the managing director of Capital Oil and Gas Limited, Ifan Yoba, over what it described as unfounded allegations against some party members and elders. It also referred the senator representing Ogun East, Buruji Kashamu, to its disciplinary committee over allegations of anti-party activities. In the same vein, the PDP also queried Senator Kashamu for his alleged involvement in some issues in the Ogun State chapter of the party. And the All Progressives Congress regional and nationwide consultations on restructuring ended in a rowdy session. Trouble started when the meeting was disrupted when hoodlums stormed the venue, attacking some members of the party. In attendance were some members of the party's stalwarts from the region, some of which include the Deputy Governor of Ondo State, Secretary to the Ondo State Government, the party's Southwest Vice Chairman, and some traditional rulers. The soul searching continues. The ruling APC is still finding its own definition of the term restructuring. And so the Zona public consultation meeting of the APC on federalism hits the city of Akure, the Ondo state capital. The proceeding kicks off perhaps as expected. But shortly, the peaceful proceedings soon got rowdy from the rear of the room. The disagreement gets uncontrollable. And before long, the disagreement had turned violent. It becomes a stone-throwing contest, an ugly scene. Some of the APC chieftains can only identify the violent players as sponsored. In the interest of the nation, the party called for uh, opinion or restructuring, and we came here. We have done our presentation, and there was no problem. Only for the talks of the secretary to the state governor here, in the person of Abegunde Abena, to come and harass me while I was granting press interview. There was no problem at all. All presentation had been done. Only for them to come here and attack me. Assuming that I have come here alone today, it could have been another thing entirely. People that he brought from the, the Osho State, all of them came with stick. Um, of the opinion that they came here wanting to fight. I don't know what happened, what led to what happened outside. I cannot talk about it. But I was inside. I mean, I don't know what really led to what he said. And if he said it was attack, I had not, I don't even know the nature of attack. But I want you to know, and you saw them, all of them will stick. The aim of the gathering may have been overshadowed by the violence, but the agitations across the country underlines the need for Nigerians to find a lasting solution to some of which are captured on the placards of some of those who attended the consultation meeting here. 
In part two, after the break, flood wreaks havoc, you know, where the Imo state capital after over 12 hours of rainfall. That's in a moment. Do stay with us.